How's it going guys? Mike Kellum here with another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about one of the biggest challenges that you have to face when you're living in an RV full time. Now, I think arguably this is the biggest challenge that you have to face, and that's heating and cooling your RV. Before we get started, I just wanna say, I'm not sponsored by anybody and nobody's paying me to make this video. I make these videos completely in my free time. So if you don't mind, please go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out and it's completely free to you. And it keeps videos like this coming out. Not only that, but you'll also get lots of really cool content from me. I have a lot of interesting stuff to say and you don't want to miss it. Everything from living in an RV to ghost hunting at the Stanley Hotel. Sorry for all the background noise, it's a very hot day today, so I got the air conditioner and a couple different fans going. But hopefully you guys can still hear me pretty clearly, I decided to use my AirPod for the microphone today. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Definitely one of the biggest challenges you face in an RV is heating and cooling, especially in the summer. I feel like RV air conditioners are very crappy generally, and it's very difficult to keep your RV cool. However, in the winter time, generally heating isn't such a big problem, it's not that difficult for the heater to heat up the whole RV but the bigger problem is in the summer. So last year during the summer, I pretty much just ran both of the air conditioners all day long. I just ran the generator and that got me through the summer, although it was very uncomfortable. I actually adjusted how I cool my RV this summer. I figured I needed to change stuff up because my solution with just running both the air conditioners was not working well enough. So what I do to keep the RV cool, if it is under 85 degrees, I will just open up all the windows and I'll put two box fans. I'll put one box fan in a window in the back of the RV blowing air into it and then I'll put another box fan on a window in the front of the RV and have it facing out. So it's sucking air into the bedroom and then out the living room. This keeps the air inside the RV relatively cool. It keeps it right at about the outside temperature. 85 degrees is not too bad. With 90 degree weather it's a little bit harder for the two box fans to keep up with it and it tends to get a little bit hotter inside the RV than it does outside. But when it's above 90 degrees you do have to change things up a little bit. Like today it is 101 degrees which oh my goodness that's too crazy. But what I've been doing when it's over 90 degrees is I will run the back air conditioner and I'll put both of the box fans in the living room, both box fans blowing out the window. So I'll have one box fan right behind my TV, just in this section right here, and then one box fan on the dinette. Both of them are blowing air out, and what this does is it draws the cool air from the one air conditioner into the bedroom, through the living room, and then out the living room. I'll also run the exhaust fans in the living room, that way it's sucking heat out the top as well. I found this seems to work a lot better than running both air conditioners. In fact, I've also tried this method running both air conditioners and it seems to cool just as much if I run just one air conditioner. So saving a little bit of energy there, I just run the one air conditioner, blow all the hot air out one side and the air conditioner brings cool air in the other side. Now I am planning eventually to have a solar setup that'll run both of the air conditioners. I'm not quite there yet. I'm getting really close. I can run one air conditioner for a little while before I have to turn off the air conditioner. But for right now, unfortunately, I do have to use the generator. I do plan to get a one and a half kilowatt solar system though, which should be able to run both air conditioners at the same time. The biggest problem with RV air conditioners is the peak power draw. So when you first fire up the air conditioner, it draws anywhere from two to 3000 watts, depending on what kind of air conditioner you have in your RV. But once it's running, it only uses about four to 700 watts depending on the RV air conditioner that you have. So definitely the biggest hurdle with that is gonna be the power inverter. But I think at the time when I upgrade my solar system, I'm also gonna upgrade my air conditioners because the air conditioners nowadays are a little bit more energy efficient. Mine run at about 700 watts and newer ones of similar BTUs run at about 400 watts. Not only that, but a lot of new air conditioners have soft start and even if they don't come with it, you can install soft start with not very much effort. With these older RV air conditioners though, I looked into installing a soft start on these ones, but unfortunately it's just not that simple, at least not simple enough for me to want to take that on. So that's the end goal is to have my air conditioning running just purely off of solar. Uh, hopefully that'll happen here very soon, hopefully by the end of the summer, but if not, the beginning of next summer. Now, as far as heating goes in the winter time, what I've been doing is running just the RV furnace. It seems to work pretty well, but you do have the problem of you have to leave and go get propane at least once a week, which is not all that fun. What I did this last winter was I was just running a space heater, which it worked well enough, but the solar setup that I have right now is enough to run a small space heater, just enough to heat up the bedroom. And that's pretty much what I did. Uh, 
unless it was below freezing and then I would turn on the furnace. But that's how I'd save myself a lot of trips to Love's. Even though I love going to Love's, it's just kind of a hassle to have to pack everything up and then move the RV over there and get everything filled up. I also found out that in some cases, it's a lot more efficient to run a space heater than it is to run the furnace. I purchased myself a little inverter generator and I was just using that to power the space heater on the days where it was really cold and I needed to have a bigger power draw. Now in the winter time when I'd run my space heater off of the inverter generator, um, the inverter generator, it would just be completely pegged out while the heater is running. And frequently the room would heat up just really hot and the uh, space heater would not shut off automatically. It has a thermostat in there, but it's just one of those cheap little thermostats. It's like a $20 space heater. It doesn't work that well. But what I did to save a lot of fuel on the inverter generator, because when there's no load on an inverter generator, it almost uses no gas. I bought myself one of these controllers here. So this controller is, so this is a VivoSun thermostat controller. Basically what it does is you set the temperature on here and you plug a heater into here. And as soon as it drops below the temperature that you set, it sends power to the outlet and turns the heater on. This saved me way more money in gas than it cost me to buy this product. And I highly, highly recommend it, but you better make sure you get this specific model because not all the models support up to 1500 watts, which is what a space heater uses. So I would recommend getting this model. And if you don't get this model, just make sure the one that you get supports 1500 watts. I'll put a link to this down in the description below if you're interested in buying it. But this saved a lot of money and it made the heating a lot more consistent. So I wasn't constantly having to turn on and turn off the space heater. Now, like I said, eventually I do plan to get a one and a half kilowatt solar system. And when that goes into effect, I'll have more than enough power to run the space heater without a generator. But using the inverter generator is the perfect solution for me right now. It doesn't cost a whole lot of money. It costs about $3 a night to run. So if you have to use your space heater every single day, it'll only cost you about 90 bucks, which is a lot better than spending $75 per week on propane for the entire RV's furnace. So yeah, basically to summarize, if you're living in an RV, it's a lot more efficient and a lot more comfortable if you just heat a small space in your RV. For example, if you have a separate bedroom from every other space, a lot of times it is cheaper to run a space heater with an inverter generator as opposed to running the RV furnace. And instead of running both air conditioners just continuously, it's a lot more efficient and a lot cooler to run just one air conditioner and have an exhaust fan in the other side of the RV, drying the hot air out and the air conditioner blowing the cold air in. Well, like I said, that's the biggest challenge that you're probably going to face living in an RV. Um, and it is kind of a tough challenge, but I hope my experiences sort of taught you how to more effectively cool and heat your RV and how to make it a lot more efficient. We'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good rest of your day and safe travels.